Hello, welcome to the next section, Neural Networks. We will attempt to introduce both Go-based neural networks and utilize this simple neural network in this section. Now we move on to the first video of this section, Neural Networks. In this video, we are going to first build a simple neural network and then train the model. We are going to build a simple neural network from scratch to learn about the basic components of neural networks and how they operate together. The nodes or neurons of our neural network have a relatively simple functionality in and of themselves. Each neuron will take in one or more values, x1, x2 and so on, combine these values according to an activation function and produce a single output as shown in the figure. You must be wondering how exactly should we combine the inputs to get the output. Well, we need a method to combine the inputs that is adjustable, and we have already seen that combining variables using coefficients and an intercept is one trainable way to combine inputs. We are going to combine the inputs linearly with some coefficients, weights, and an intercept, the bias. Here W1, W2, and so on are our weights, and B is the bias. This combination of inputs is a good start, but it is linear at the end of the day, and thus not able to model nonlinear relationships between the input and the output. To introduce some nonlinearity, we are going to apply an activation function to this linear combination of inputs. The activation function that we will use here is similar to the logistic function. In the context of neural networks, the logistic function is referred to as the sigmoid function. Let's go ahead and define our activation function in Go along with its derivative. Here we open our code. The sigmoid present here implements the sigmoid function for use in activation functions, and sigmoid prime implements the derivative of the sigmoid function for backpropagation. The simple neural network that we are going to build will contain an input and output layer. The network will include a single hidden layer between the input and output layer. This is our reference architecture. In particular, we have included four nodes in the input layer, three nodes in the hidden layer, and three nodes in the output layer. The four nodes in the input layer correspond to the number of attributes that we are going to feed into the network. The output layer has three nodes because we will be setting up our network to make classifications for the iris flowers, which could be one of three classes. Now regarding the hidden layer, why are we using one hidden layer with three nodes? Well, one hidden layer is sufficient for a very large majority of simple tasks. You can also search the number of nodes in the hidden layer to automate your choice. OK, so now we have some good motivation for why this combination of nodes might help us make predictions. How are we actually going to adjust for all of the sub-functions of our neural network nodes based on some input data? The answer is called backpropagation. Backpropagation is a method for training our neural network that involves doing the following iteratively over a series of epochs, or exposure to our training dataset, feeding our training data forward through the neural network to calculate an output. Calculating errors in the output using gradient descent or other relevant method to determine how we should change our weights and biases based on the errors backpropagating these weights bias changes into the network. First, we define a struct neural net that will contain all of the information that defines a trained neural network. Later on, we will utilize trained neural net values to make predictions. We will then define a struct neural net config that will contain all of the parameters that define our network architecture and how we will go about our backpropagation iterations. Here, W hidden and B hidden are the weights and biases for the hidden layer of the network, and W out and B out are the weights and biases for the output layer of the network, respectively. Note that we are using gonum.org slash v1 slash gonum slash mat matrices for all the weights and biases, and we will use these similar matrices to represent our inputs and outputs. This will let us easily perform the operations related to the backpropagation and generalize our training to any number of nodes in the input, 
hidden and output layers. Next, we define a function that initializes a new neural network based on a neural net config value and a method that trains a neural net value based on a matrix of inputs, X, and a matrix of labels, Y. In the train method, we complete our backpropagation method and place the resulting trained weights and biases into the receiver. First, we initialize the weights and biases randomly in the train method, as shown in the code. Post that, we define the output of the neural network. Then we need to loop over each of our epochs, completing the backpropagation of the network. This again involves a feed-forward stage in which outputs are calculated and a backpropagating stage in which changes to the weights and biases are applied. In the feed-forward section of this loop, the inputs are propagated forward throughout our network of nodes. Then, once we have an output from the feed-forward process, we go back through the network, calculating deltas or changes for the output and hidden layers, as in the code. The deltas are then utilized to update the weights and biases of our network. A learning rate is also used to scale these changes, which can help the algorithm converge. This final piece of the backpropagation loop is implemented here. Note here we have utilized another helper function that allows us to sum matrices along one dimension, whilst keeping the other dimension intact. This sum along axis function sums a matrix along a particular dimension, preserving the other dimension. The last thing that we do in the train method is we add the trained weights and biases to the receiver value and return. Awesome! That wasn't so bad. We have a method to train our neural network in about 100 lines of Go code. To check whether this code runs and to get a sense about what our weights and biases might look like, let's train a neural network on some simple dummy data. Let's just sanity check ourselves with some dummy data, as shown in the code. We first define the input attributes, define the labels, define our network architecture and learning parameters, train the neural network, and finally, we output the weights that define our network. Compiling and running this neural network training code results in the output weights and biases as shown here. These weights and biases fully define our trained neural network. That is, W hidden and B hidden allow us to translate our inputs into values that are input to the output layer of our network. And W out and B out allow us to translate those values into the final output of our neural net. That's all for now, folks.